Hey everybody. Um, so I think what I'm going to try to do on Fridays is post some videos and, and things like that that are a little different, maybe a little off topic. Some of it will be science related. Um, some of it might just be for fun. Uh, what I was thinking I'm going to do today um, is I thought I'd just sort of check in, uh, you know, and tell you a little bit about what I've been up to and uh, what's going on uh, with the first two or three weeks now of, uh, of quarantine here. Uh, so, uh, aside from, you know, the fact that my kids are home too, their, their school closed the day before ours did, and now we're all going to be here for at least another month. Um, so aside from trying to get them going with school, trying to, uh, do my job, cause I still have the job, um, that I'm really happy to have, uh, working with you guys and, and putting stuff out there for you to do and, and keeping that up, up. Uh, you know, I'm keeping them busy with, you know, my daughter, she's got arts and crafts going pretty much 24 seven and baking. Uh, my son's got his guitar that he's been playing pretty much all the time when he's not playing, you know, CSGO or talking online with his friends. And then, you know, there's occasionally there's the trips to the grocery store, but the other really big thing that's been taking up a lot of my time is, um, my wife is a nurse practitioner. Um, so if you don't know what that means, uh, she went uh, first, she got her first undergrad degree, then she went back and she got a second grad, uh, bachelor's degree in science for nursing. So she became a registered nurse, took a test, got a license to be a registered nurse. Then she went back a few years later and she went to graduate school and got a master of science degree in nursing, took another test and got licensed as a nurse practitioner. Now what that is, um, is it has a lot more, uh, she's, she's a provider, a care provider. She can do diagnoses, she can give prescriptions, she can treat. Um, so she's, she's very similar in her scope to what doctors do. And in fact, in many states, uh, nurse practitioners can have their own office, can have their own practice. Uh, Massachusetts is a little bit different. They don't have quite that level of independence. Uh, but as far as working with patients, she is, you probably, if you go to the doctor, um, you know, a lot of times you'll see sometimes the doctor, sometimes you'll see something called a physician's assistant, or you'll see a nurse practitioner. Um, and nurse practitioners do just about everything that doctors do um, and have very similar uh, abilities. They just have a different perspective. They come from a nursing perspective, um, so they, they have a lot more background in care and advocating and things like that for patients. So she does that. She actually has two jobs doing that. Um, she works for Mass General Hospital. Um, she manages a research study, uh, which studies anti-epileptic medications in pregnancy and how it affects uh, women and, and babies and newborns. Uh, so she does that. Now that job, fortunately, as the, the manager of that project, she has been working over the last couple of years to make that job remote. Um, so her whole system, her whole staff was already set up to work remotely, so that's great. Uh, because she can't, she's not even allowed to go into her office right now. Uh, but her second job as a clinical worker, as a provider of health care, um, she's a specialist in dermatology. And she was working at Mass General doing that as well. But she recently switched jobs to um, UMass Memorial in Worcester. In fact, this was her first week. She had two weeks off, which was a, a wild two weeks to have off. But she started this week. Uh, and we knew that she was going to be going back. She was going to be in a hospital. It's, it's you know, in a hospital, not just a, an office that you go to. Um, so we knew she was going to be exposed. And, of course, you see all the news um, about the, the PPEs, the masks and the gowns and the face shields and all that stuff that are running out. And, you know, you get a little bit nervous. She's going into an office in a hospital, in, in a, a department in a hospital, where people are going to be coming in. She's going to be exposed. Uh, and then start getting and seeing things and hearing and getting emails about doctors and nurses being reassigned from specialties like dermatology and things into you know emergency rooms critical care caring for patients with covid because there's just that much demand that they're pulling people off of some of their other duties and reassigning them to to hold up the the beds that they need um, so she had her first day in the office yesterday after a couple of days of training and they told her basically right when she got there you're going to be reassigned, um, and in fact, we think you're going to be reassigned to the new field hospital that they're setting up at the DCU Center in Worcester, which is exclusively going to be for treating COVID-19 patients. So, of course, there goes the anxiety level. Um, and, you know, I'm at home. I'm with the kids. Um, I'm, you know, relatively 
speaking, totally safe. I got to go out every once in a while. Kids are staying home. Um, so my level of exposure is minimal. But she doesn't have a choice. She is an essential worker. Um, so she's going. She's going in. She's got to go where they tell her to go. So this is probably where she's going. Um, so, of course, I start freaking out. And what am I going to do? And, you know, then it kind of hits me. Hey, I'm a nerd. What do nerds do? Yeah, that's what we do. We put science to it, we, we do research. So I go online, I start looking for ways to get this equipment, and of course everything's sold out. So then, what do I do now? Well, I do a little more research. I go on all these different places, I start to see people talking about and see it on the news, see people doing 3D printing, making masks, making face shields, making this equipment for people, and I say, hey, you know what? That's what nerds do. So I go on, I buy myself a 3D printer, I buy some uh, material to make the, the, uh, the masks and the frames, and the uh, equipment and I try it out I go get some designs I try it out and of course at first doesn't work so well have some mishaps getting it set up get some more designs get some more information try it again try some other stuff masks and and uh, goggles and things and that doesn't always work so then I go back and I try to find the right design I get the right design and I start making uh, equipment so I've got finally uh, the printer working, I've got the, the materials, I've got the designs, I've got the software, and I'm making and I'm printing uh, face shields. So I've got a few printed out right now, a couple different designs. You see in this picture there's one over here with um, uh, an extra piece that goes up above uh, for the forehead. There's a piece down on the bottom left that's actually two pieces that are going to have a hinge in it so the mask can be lifted up and then put back down and there's uh, little pieces that go along the bottom to reinforce the bottom and shape the bottom. There's these little uh, pieces with looks like little teeth on them. Those actually go around the back so you can adjust the, the fit of the elastic. The elastic band is there. I've got a ton more um, filament material for the printer. And I'm, at this point, you know, especially knowing where she's going to be going, I'm just going to keep printing until I run out of material. Uh, I've also looked up and ordered some special material to make some um, filter re respirator mask for myself and my kids and for my wife when she's not at work uh, and some software that will allow it to actually uh, do a 3D scan of our face and custom print a mask that will fit directly to our face in uh, custom to ourselves. So, and I'm not telling you any of this um, because I feel like I'm special and you know that I'm, I mean my wife is a hero, right? She's, she's out there, she's doing it. Um, I don't think this makes me special. In fact, I think this is going on in millions of homes all across the country. If you have people in your family who are work working in healthcare, whether they're nurses or um, you know nursing assistants or medical assistants or techs or doctors, um, they're out there. They're doing it. They don't have a choice. Um, so they're out there doing it for us. So, um, but that's really just my story so far um, with this, and I thought I'd share that with you. Um, my plan for next week, I do have a plan for next week's um, sort of Friday nerd video uh, that'll be a little different. It's something that uh, I think I've mentioned or I've shown you a similar uh, demonstration in class and it's something I wanted to try on a bigger scale. Uh, so kind of a, a Mythbusters, um, Mythbusters type situation where I've seen, I've seen and done something on a small scale and uh, now I want to try and see if I can do it on a bigger scale and see if it works and I have the materials, I think, to make it happen. Um, and I'll be bringing it to you from my, my lovely uh, studio that you can see here with the green screen behind me. Um, the good news for me was I've been making these videos and stuff um, for years. Uh, so I had a lot of the equipment already when it was time to go remote. So um, all I had to do was, was kind of set it up and, and put the green screen. There's a black screen behind that. I've got some extra lights and things like that and, and tripods and things to, to make stuff happen and the software to edit the videos and, and post them for you. So, um, that's it for this week. I will post an update as soon as I have one uh, over the weekend, but the plan for next week is that we will be introducing some new material, little bits at a time going forward. Keep in touch, stay safe, wash your hands, um, and we'll see you next time.